duly observed. On behalf of Secretary General Vasne, Dr. Gyan Prakash Agarwal, and entire Vasne team and e group team, I, Dr. Sampa Banerjee, Executive Director Vasne, welcome you all to Ubuntu Global Business Opportunities Trade Promotion Discussion Series. Uh, the series is first of its kind at Vasne International Secretariat. Today, we have 30 business delegates attending the meet. I welcome you all. I'm very honored and happy to share the opening remarks on this very important theme, namely international trade opportunities in Africa. Lot of opportunities and different trade commodities are there in Africa to develop the trade relationships. Only we need to focus ourselves on few development plan pillars, that is high quality international connectivity, identification and strengthening unique, unique rural products, sustainable mobility, economic resilience, willingness to expand the business because today the whole world is based on a shared economy. So connecting Africa in terms of business opportunities will be building the business pillars towards the shared economic possibilities, which is one of the broad objectives of the African Union. And all we are doing our share towards attending the agenda. As you all know that global economy interconnected and we all are facing the polar damage of of COVID-19 and presently the Ukraine-Russia conflict, which is again a uh, I mean, uh, matter of concern with this topic. We are here to discuss how to design a strategy and inclusive approach towards identifying opportunities in Africa. The whole African continent has full potential while storing cereals, agricultural uh, products, especially the natural resources and the advantages, opportunities are the almost that almost all the 55 countries of the African continent is aggressively working for promoting the SMEs. Present behind this that we have realized that MSME plays an important role in developing the economy. If we take the example of India, you will find that MSME contributes 30% of India's GDP. The share of MSME-related products in total exports from India during 1819 is 48%. The MSME sector accounts for 95% of the industrial units and approximately 50% of exports besides uh, that I mean uh, that this provides employment to almost 100 million people, making it largest source of employment after the agriculture sector. The development of this sector thus holds key to inclusive growth and plays a critical role. During the course of the event, all the relevant issues related to the topic will be covered and addressed by eminent speakers and panelists, such as presentation on Mauritius India Com Comprehensive Economic Cooperation partnership agreement and business opportunities, business opportunities for Indian SMEs in Africa, etc. WASNE since inception has, uh, has been striving to strengthen the international cooperation to facilitate growth opportunities to SMEs between countries. With our members in over 100 countries of the world, WASNE has organized hundreds of conference, seminars, training, program, B2B meets, exhibitions, uh, I mean, uh, it has been, I mean, we enable SMEs in developing and least developing countries. So today's program on business opportunities and trade promotion in another significant step taken to find the business opportunities in Africa and promote trade to enable stronger collaboration between the business people of African continent and our member countries to further enhance trade and investment relationship between them. Uh, here, I, uh, we are uh, happy to announce that uh, 26th ICSM International Conference of WASNI is going to be held on Johannesburg, South, Af South Africa. The uh, program will be held from uh, 30th December to 2nd, uh, 30th November to 2nd December. So uh, uh, I request all of you to join uh, uh, there and our uh, website is www.wasmeinfo.org where if you click the event then you will uh, find the link there um, of the IC meeting. Do join, do, um, do your business there. We'll be happy to see you there in, um, physically. 
So um, that was the announcement of ICAP. Uh, and especially, and you know, what we do to SME especially after the pandemic that impacted global trade badly and there is significant drop following the lockdown in different countries. It has been more worse for the SMEs globally. In this situation, initiatives like today's business opportunity may jointly be tools and what may provide critical opportunities for SMEs. We are convinced and hope for many meaningful linkages, partnerships and interactions. Uh, I mean, will be delivered and seen during the entire program. Once again, a warm welcome to you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for your warm welcome speech. Our, our Honorable President, His Excellence Professor Dr. K.C. Janaki, President Vasme, has joined the session through online platform. I invite sir to share the keynote address. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Mega. Uh, Mr. Gyan Prakash, Secretary General of WASME, Dr. Sampa Banaji, Dr. Sanjeev Laek, uh, and the, the panelists of today, my good friends, Mr. Chamru, Mr. Amuru, and the first secretary from the Mauritius Embassy, Dr. Ramsami, let me welcome you on my part to the WASME, WASME House and to the other friends online, again to the WASME House. And again, all the esteemed participants online today and even at the WASME House, let me tell you hello from Moscow, my greeting from Moscow. Now, talking about trade opportunities, talking about the role of SMEs today and the development of SMEs and the promotion of economic growth, especially now, my dear friend, Mr. Atul Puri, sorry for omitting you, and talking about growth today is a big, big puzzle because I know you people are practitioners. I am today a diplomat ambassador based in Russia. So we keep thinking, what are the factors that would really lead to growth? Because all the classical assumptions and new classical assumptions of promoting trade and promoting economic growth, you know, they are being questioned today. Because when you look at trade, what we studied, you know, I don't know, 30 years back about the, the classical theories of trade, about the neoclassical theories of trade, like there is no transport cost, minimum government intervention, mobility of factor inputs, things like perfect knowledge and certainty. All these things do not exist today. People who are practicing, people who are experts like you, you know that today the realities are really different. Today, when we looked at what is happening in the whole world, what we are looking at the, at the uncertainties in the, in the global market, when we, we've just uh, seen what happened with COVID, what is happening now with the, the nuclear, not nuclear, sorry, with the Ukraine and, and Russia problem. So I think we have to revisit a lot of our ideas, a lot of our assumptions, not only about the promotion of trade, but also including the promotion of SMEs. And WASME, as you've as you know, plays a very important role in the promotion of SMEs, not only in India, but also globally. Now, our experience in Mauritius and elsewhere, we've seen that one of the main institutions promoting growth has been the role of institutions and governance. And this is where we should start with, the right institutions, the right people, and the role of governance. Having the right macroeconomic and microeconomic framework having the right going towards the best practice. And these are, these are the main elements and ingredients today. Because today, today the whole, we are talking about the role of ICT, the role of AI, the problem with logistics. So I think experts today, we should also not only look at SMEs, but we should look at the whole, the whole issue at a very holistic approach. We should take a holistic approach towards 
the development of SMEs within the overall strategy of not only locally, but also globally. And I should also talk to you as ambassador, as ambassador, because lots of people don't realize that the role of diplomacy in promoting trade is very important. I know that uh, Mr. Mr. Amaru is going to talk about this, and even Mr. Dame Chamru and Mr. Dr. Ramsamy, because they know what is the meaning of diplomacy, how what is the role of diplomat, and the role of having a good economic and effective economic diplomacy today for any country, whether it is a big country, whether it is a small country. Because today we depend a lot not on, on regional integration, on regional economic zone. And in Mauritius, you know, we've developed our economic uh, processing zone long time back in order to promote Mauritius, in order to develop Mauritius. So there are many issues, you know, when we talk about SMEs, uh, we also talk about the connectivity today of SMEs, the connectivity and creating the right platform between countries and between businessmen. What is the role of the business delegation of take, what is the role of having international trade fair? What is the role of providing information on all the platforms today? And I think even, even WASME is trying to play this role today, trying to connect people internationally, trying to connect uh, businesses internationally, create the right platform. And this is where I commend my WASME team, which is really doing a good job towards promoting the role of SMEs. And then, I would also mention, you know, just see WASME is, is uh, organizing not only one conference, but a number of webinars, a number of conferences. And the one which is coming, I think it's very important for all of you. On my side, I invite all of you to join us, you know, in Johannesburg, you know, on the 30th November to 2nd of December for the international conference on, on SMEs, which is organized by WASME in collaboration with other organizations in South Africa and in Nigeria. So I won't be long because there are experts, you know, who are, who are, who are going to discuss how we can promote SMEs, how we can promote economic growth, how, what are the various business opportunities which are there. And, and I think, I'm going to listen to all of you, to all the panelists, including those people who are online, uh, the participants online. I, I would suggest them, I would request them to give their opinion and to, to educate us and to share the wisdom to us. So let me thank you. And uh, I wish all the participants, okay, my best wishes. Thank you very much. Thank you, President, sir, for expressing your respect and gratitude towards our organization. Now I invite Ms. Archana Sharma, Director of Planning and Development, WASME, for WASME presentation. Thank you. Ma'am, unmute yourself. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay, fine now. I was just trying to. Is this better? Yeah. Yes, yes, all okay. Okay. So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and dignitaries. Uh, welcome to Vasme House for this Ubuntu Global Business Opportunity Trade Discussion Series. So I'll be talking more about the organization World Association for Small and Medium Enterprises. So uh, 
So Vasmi is based on the core belief, which is, you know, uh, in sync with the uh, quotation of uh, Mr. Henry Ford that uh, coming together is a beginning, keeping, keeping together is a progress and working together is success. So as our Honorable uh, President Vasmi has shared that Vasmi is a platform which uh, provides uh, the, uh, you know, opportunity to SMEs for the right time, right connections and right uh, people so that we grow together. So if you talk about VASME, VASME has a member representative for uh, over more than 100 countries. VASME is almost four, more than four decade old organization. It was incepted in 1980. And this is International Secretariat, VASME House, and all the activities are governed from VASME House only. And we have a chapters in few countries and, you know, like Bangladesh, Canada, and uh, if uh, the VASME is basically, if we talk about is the most representative and effective and leading global nonprofit organization who promotes SMEs. And this is the only SME promotion organization or nonprofit organization who has got consultative and observer status with most of the UN organizations, which include uh, ECOSOC, UNCTAD, UNESCAPE, UNESCO, and UNIDO, and uh, uh, ANKI, TRAL, and ILO. And we work closely with the international organization. VASME's core purpose was to, you know, really uh, revitalize the global economy by supporting the SMEs who is, you know, in any country, the 90%, 90 to 96% of the private enterprise community is represented by micro, small and medium enterprises. And that was the mission, that was the vision for, with which the VASME was uh, incepted. So the vision on the mission of the VASME was to, uh, you know, build the organization as the world's foremost private and coercive community of MSMEs, dedicated and strengthening, dedicated to strengthening and fostering them as the prime driver of the global economy. And the vision is to become the catalyst in strengthening this national and international cooperation for the growth of SME development. So if I go back to the name of the organization is the World Association for Small and Medium Enterprises, not of uh, the small and medium enterprises. So we work closely with the SME promotion organizations at different level, be it uh, the government level and uh, the private level, the uh, bank, financial institution, academics, every the civil societies and everyone. So the VASME is spearheaded by a global leadership, which is, uh, we are fortunate to have uh, uh, doc, uh, His Excellency Dr. K.C. Janaki, Honorable Ambassador Government of Mauritius and Russia as our president. And then we have, uh, we, we are represented by six vice president uh, in different uh, regions. So we have uh, Mr. Dumisani Jemisibi, who's the vice president in Africa. And then we have Dr. Friday Okpara representing Africa. And we have Mr. Zillur Rahman, who's representing Asia, Bangladesh. And uh, in, from India, we have Mr. I.D. Narayan. And from Nepal, we have Mr. Rajendra Malla. And we also have the vice president representing the European region, Mr. Rajendra Prasad Lalchan. And uh, the, the office bearer is, you know, led by Dr. Gyan Prakash Agrawal, who is the Secretary General of VASME. And then we have Dr. Sampa Energy, uh, the Executive Director of VASME, and Dr. Sanjeev Laya, um, uh, Executive Secretary of VASME. So VASME uh, has got a strong hold for SME promotion since you know for more than four decades as i mentioned and uh, we work closely with national governments ministries civil societies research institutes regional authorities local government bodies national and international organization in our member countries so whenever we do activities like we do conference whether it's a policy advocacy conference seminar or webinars or any activities we work closely with all the stakeholders who are promoting smes in the respective region and uh, if we talk about the multi-dimensional the service portfolio, the multi-dimensional activity that are undertaken by the VASME, it includes the policy advocacy. We have a research and publication where we uh, carry out a monthly newsletter which talks about you know the, all the 
uh, latest trend and issues pertaining to SME development. And uh, then we, we have uh, inbuilt the startup ecosystem also that so that we can, you know, really promote the excellent or the, the really uh, work, hardworking startups to be known globally. And we have a circulation to lakhs of subscribers. Earlier it was in a print mode and we are now Due to the COVID, we have moved to the digital mode. So it has more than four lakh subscription. So it is a mouthpiece of Vasne. And then we have uh, uh, platforms for SMEs to exchange the information, best practice, knowledge, and uh, forge the uh, collaboration and networking opportunities through conferences and seminar. And then we, we, we conduct training and workshop also for the capacity building of the SMEs from the entrepreneurship development to skill development. We keep doing the training programs. And then we have this trade facilitation and this global business opportunity Ubuntu and trade promotion series was part of this initiative. And whatever activities we carry out, this is based on the five core pillars of you know, really establishing the uh, uh, VASME as the, uh, you know, the most synergistic network of national government ministries and SME promotion organizations. So wherever the SMEs need our support, we have a strong network to, to provide appropriate support mechanism in their respective region. And then we, we promote, uh, you know, SMEs and the, uh, through, through policy advocacy. So whatever the uh, challenges SMEs are facing, we are addressing those challenges to various platforms from the ministries to national platform to even the UN forum. We collate the addresses and then in the UN forum, we address those concerns. At VASBE also is uh, a strategic facilitation center for the SMEs. So wherever uh, you need any support, whether it's the information or the uh, networking or the funding or the any kind of a support, Vasme is there to support you. So you can contact Vasme. We have a, a network of, uh, you know, experts, uh, you know, uh, the the uh, agents who, who really handhold and support the SMEs. And, uh, uh, and also to create mechanism for the cost effective international networking. So I would really say this, this initiative is part of that. So through this, we are really trying that, you know, the African countries and the Indian SMEs both the SMEs of the different countries can really network with each other and really get benefited through this VASME platform. And I'm happy to, we are happy to collaborate with eGrowth for that and catalyze this mechanism to the SMEs. And next I'll move on to, this is just a simple roadmap of our annual flagship international conference on SMEs. So our president and executive director both have spoken about it, uh, this conference. So far, we have conducted 25 S, uh, ICSMEs. This year, this is the 26th edition, and this is going to be held in Johannesburg from 30th November to 2nd December. And this time, we are really addressing, through all these conferences, we have addressed the key challenges of SMEs. You know, globally they are facing, and this time we are addressing the uh, the 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 uh, recent uh, crisis that SMEs have faced because of the pandemic, the floods, the climate change, the Ukraine Russia war. So how these SMEs are resiliently, you know, facing those challenges and how the different economies and the government bodies can really create this pro, you know, pro policy framework for the SMEs to uh, thrive in those, uh, you know, crisis time as well. So this conference is focusing on that aspect and uh, the South African Small Business uh, Department of Small Business uh, Agency uh, and um, the government, we are trying to uh, in, invite the, the government of Mauritius. They have consented to participate in this uh, ICSME. And then we are trying uh, Bangladesh, Nepal, and so that, you know, the, 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 at, the, at the policy level, we can exchange, we can bring in the best practices and learn from the uh, well done, uh, you know, well uh, operated economies and help the developing countries to formulate those strategies. And apart from that, the ICSME, the another highlighting factor is the SME Excellence Award, which is also integral part of ICSMEs. 
So we are trying to reward those SMEs world over who have really done very well in those crisis area. So if you want to nominate, you can write to us and we can, you know, uh, take it uh, this forward to us. So uh, Vasme's strength, if I talk about the Vasme's biggest strength is it, it's the oldest organization. It has a four, 42 years of experience. We have a strong network of, you know, in global uh, 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 world over, we we have a close association with UN organizations. We have carried out various key projects, and during the pandemic time, we have Vasme has collaborated with Amazon, AWS, to really provide this digitization support, which is you know this uh, digitization is the key aspect for them to really strive the, because all those during the lockdown, all the logistics and supply chain was hampered. So uh, this technology integration is very important, specifically the uh, IT. So we, we, have, we are really trying to help SMEs in the best possible manner. We have conducted uh, 26 ICSME and hundreds of uh, regional and conferences. And uh, we have a, a strong advisory board. We have a people to really guide us and who can really uh, take the SME concern forward so that they can strive. VASME is a membership-based organization. If I talk about the benefits to the member, it is categorized into information assistance, enterprise support, business support, platform to participate in the knowledge support, exposure visit. We, we, we conduct buyer-seller meet. We, 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 we you know, take, take the trade business delegations to different countries and we really facilitate the business delegation from different countries to Vasme House in India. And then uh, through our platform, we really provide this branding opportunities for the organization to be seen in the global platform. Because in ICSME, if I talk about which is the biggest global platform of Vasme, more than 300 to 600, depending upon the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, objective of the particular region, we, we have a participation. It's a huge platform for uh, your, your company, your brand, your organization to be seen on the global platform. So we, the uh, membership categories have uh, are of basically four types. We have a general permanent associate and associate India membership. Uh, associate India is open for the private SME community and the general membership is primarily for the SME promotion organization and the decision makers, the government organization and the permanent members, a lifetime membership and associate members is the uh, organization or individual who are supporting SMEs through their technical and professional services. So what 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 the benefit the members get when they they they, they become part of the Vasme family? So we we just do not provide the services to them. We 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 build on with them, you know. So we build on with them to promote SMEs in their region with their collaboration. So we 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 do do a lot of agreements for the trainings for uh, innovation, the excellence, the technology transfer. So whatever is the need of the member country we uh, undertake that and take this forward. And uh, the members also get this global platform to really uh, talk about their uh, initiatives to the global uh, audience. And, uh, and they, they get the speaking the, the, on the various large conferences they have, they can you know, represent their organization. And then uh, as I spoke about the customized services, we provide the advisory services to the uh, you know, institution, individuals, and the organization, and all the knowledge support, technology support, trade facilitation, and financial assistance, and market linkages is there. These are the few leading member organization that uh, is there with VASME. So uh, the uh, Ministry of Industry, uh, uh, Nepal Chamber of Commerce, Small and Medium Development uh, Agency of Nigeria, FinCorp Swaziland, uh, all, all, all these are the members. And these are the uh, key stakeholders whom, with whom we work closely. And there I come to an end to a presentation. So this is, if we see, this is the snapshot of the uh, 2017 ICSME which was inaugurated by the Vice President of India and the, attend, uh, attended by the uh, uh, 
uh, honorable industry minister from uh, government of Mauritius as well as the, the government of Bangladesh. And then we have a vice president of our organization and our leaders on dais. So there also we, we, we uh, you know, um, basically uh, launched the position paper for SMEs to really uh, initiate the crucial uh, agenda of integrating SMEs with the sustainable development goals. So we are building on that through various aspects. So thank you so much for your attention. Over to Mega. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing the informative presentation with us. Global Business Opportunities Trade Promotion Initiative by Wasme and eGrowth. Now I invite Mr. Atul Puri, founder eGrowth, to share some views on this initiative and about eGrowth. Over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good evening, everyone. present here in person and everybody who's available with us online, uh, uh, all the dignitaries. Um, I'm sorry, I'm addressing the diplomats for the first time. So I would not probably be thorough with the proper channel. So please forgive me for that. Um, so uh, thanks Megha for inviting me. Uh, I'll just take you through a small presentation. I was supposed to take uh, 15 minutes, I'll try and cut it short so that we get down to business as soon as possible. The first piece, uh, anybody, um, or rather let me invite some of you who would know what is the meaning of the word Ubuntu. So thanks. So big round of applause for you. Okay. That's good enough. <laughs> Please don't eat my time. All right. So Ubuntu is uh, it comes from South Africa. I think the language is Zulu. The meaning of the word is I am because you are. And I thought this was an appropriate term which we could use for this initiative. Because today we are world citizens. As a world, we are one. We may keep on fighting as nations. We may keep on fighting as in different manners. We find enough reasons to do that. But then there is only one reason to live, to come together, and that is that we are on the same planet. So Ubuntu was the thought process with which we started. Right? This is the first in the series. You may not be very comfortable. You may not be very, uh, you may have been thinking that it should be at par with the Taj Hotel. We will go there. All right. And uh, uh, thanks, sir, for taking time out and uh, being with us in person. All right. I'll take a couple of minutes to share more about e-growth. And then we'll uh, get into the real conversation. At eGrowth, we cultivate opportunities. We are farmers. Okay. We are a multi channel sales and marketing, sales and business development platform. Uh, we nurture relationships and use technology to grow business. And we are here to ensure that there is measurable growth for everybody. As an idea, eGrowth was conceived in 2014. And over the years, we've built a community of around 60,000 plus entrepreneurs, most of them in India and some of them outside of India as well. We choose to be frugal. And if you don't know frugal, go to Google, all right? So we look at opportunities or methods in which we spend less and get a, a larger value out of it. And we realized that uh, this was the kind of thinking what Vasme had and we tied, uh, tied up with them so that we could take this further to the people. 
All right. Uh, Vasu has been doing it for more than 40 years. You would have probably done it in another 20 years, considering the technology is there. But rather than doing that, we thought that let's join hands and take the mission further. So thank you for accepting us, sir. This is some of the media coverage. Long ago, there used to be papers and uh, a lot of things used to happen in papers, and that is what you can see here. These are some of the events that we've conducted in the past. We used to meet in person earlier also. All right, some more, yet some more. We've been raising a community, so some images for that. Now, India MSME story, uh, Dr. Banerjee spoke about it. So Dr. Banerjee, thanks for covering it up. But since it is there in the slides, let me take a couple of uh, minutes on it. <clears throat> These are some of the photographs which I clicked when I personally traveled to different parts of the country so that I could have a feel of what it is to be a businessman. India has around 634 million uh, business owners or MSMEs. They contribute around 50% of the uh, exports that happens out of India. And the manufacturing output is around one third of the total manufacturing that happens in India. And share in GDP is around 29%. And yet, if we see, MSMEs don't make as much money as they should. That is why we choose to be frugal, because we are partners with the frugal guys. Then there is the other story, which is the startup story. India, as of today, has around 77,000 startups registered. Out of them, around 107, not around, exact figure is 107 as of today. They are unicorns. And there are a few which are more than 5 million, 5 billion, sorry, dollars, US dollars. Funds raised is $131 billion. And the combined value is around $350 billion. So this is another end of the spectrum. There is so much of money being generated. Now it's purely our choice whether we choose to be backbenchers or to be the guys out there. And we would be somewhere in between. Now what? You have two choices. Status quo. I personally am not in favor of it. But those who are, will still have to be with you. Or you can challenge the status quo. That is a game which is worth fighting. And that's what why we are here. And thanks to each one of you for taking time out. You had all the reason to be at home, be sipping a cup of tea at your home or maybe uh, hit the bar, but then you chose to come here. Thanks a lot. So let's look forward. What's in store for us? So what's in store for us is SDGs. How many of you have heard of SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals? Sorry. Now, this is the direction in which the world is going. We as human beings have done enough injury to the planet and now we need to apply some bomb and that's what we're doing. We at EGROF, we choose to be a part of this game. The three basic pillars of EGROWTH are collaboration, excellence, and opportunities. Incidentally, this is the acronym for CEO, Chief Executive Officer. So we choose to be somebody who continuously looks for collaboration, excellence, and opportunities. And this in turn creates economic value which, in, which is in line with the eighth goal of uh, Sustainable Development Goals. How do we deliver value? Your existing business, we create or we support you with a turbocharger, which has five pillars to it. Community, solutions, delivery, transformation, and lead generation, which in turn gives you profitable growth. So these are the three elements. The bottom is collaboration, the second piece is excellence, and the third piece is opportunities. I can speak at length for this, but I'd rather skip and go faster. Okay. So community, we are kind of evolving as a network of networks. We work with many other uh, industry bodies. 
whether for profit or otherwise, such that we can impact a larger number of uh, individual business owners. We walk the talk, we've been on the field, we've been working online, hybrid, whichever mechanism, we've done something. And there is still a lot to do. These are some of the other events that we've conducted in the past or been part of them. All right, solutions. Primarily, uh, so this image that you see, this was created around two, three days back. And who created this was Fatma. Fatma, would you please raise your hand? So she's a student, she's an intern with us, and uh, she's been creating this stuff, right? Why, why am I sharing this? We've been frugal here also. We're not paying her enough. And yes, she's doing this, right? The five primary business uh, solutions that we work on are finance, business transformation, business management, vendor development, and business networking. Some more details about each of them, not, we'll not go into the details here. Then we talk about delivery. How do we deliver this? So you share your challenges. You've got an executive team with you and in turn work with their delivery partners. There are some pieces which we deliver ourselves. Others we deliver through the delivery partners. This is the primary model. This is the small team. So for a very long time, I was a lone ranger and I was doing it alone. And then I thought, let me just get out of the shell. And so right now we've got a team of nine people, which is growing. So in the bottom line, uh, two of them are here right now. Fatma is here and then uh, Puneet is also here. Puneet, would you raise your hand, please? Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks for coming. Yeah. Okay. So essentially uh, working on mentoring piece, business consulting, as well as on community and content. There's some of our delivery partners. And then transformation piece, we've got a mentor board, we've got an executive team. We have a large pool of subject matter experts and we'll be glad to uh, help you reach out to them. And I also run a platform or a, a training platform, which is called as Design Your Business, because I believe that uh, most of the businesses they collapse or are not able to get the, their due because they're not designed well. And then we also work on the market research piece. And then lead gen, Unless there are leads, we don't get customers. So here, uh, so the universe is around 8 billion people today. Out of which there are some people who know about e-growth. So there are only two kinds of people. Those who know about e-growth and those who don't know about e-growth. So those who know, we keep on expanding that community. Within them, <clears throat> there I call them as the consumers. They are those people who consume our content, who uh, participate in our events. And then within them are the subscribers. These are the ones who paid and become part of our, uh, uh, who are uh, contributing such that we are able to deliver better. And then within them, there are some of us who are the partners. All right. We cultivate leads through marketing events, automation, international business. So, so right now we are partnering with Vasme so that we could uh, we can reach out to the larger audience. Uh, we can also reach out to the international community, right? So we keep on uh, stitching such relationships. We are lead generation farmers. So the one in the middle, that is the image which you would have seen in the past couple of days. Sometimes you would have got pissed off that it is coming too often, but then that was the only way we, which you could have been here, right? And then on Tuesdays, we have an online event, which is called as uh, Opportunity Exchange, which is a business networking thing. It happens at five o'clock India time. All of you are uh, most welcome to please join. How can you associate? You can associate as a partner, as a subscriber, as a consumer. There's a lot of content which you can consume on our website, on YouTube channel and elsewhere. So connecting the dots. The business landscape is changing. There's no denying. The changes are ongoing and they'll continue to happen. And India has an, a strong MSME story and you have the choice to challenge the status quo. E-growth can help you and you take the call. This was a little bit about us and uh, uh, I did take some notes of why Africa, but then when there are stalwarts, I would rather leave it to them. 
but i must definitely say uh, we started with africa as the focus area for a simple reason that africa is probably the fastest growing uh, continent on this planet today all right and that is the only place which is still not plundered enough <laughs> and before that happens <laughs> let us start contributing all right <laughs> not to go not not to go and plunder yeah <clears throat> Okay, so thanks a lot. Uh, so, uh, Mega, over to you. Thank you so much, sir, for your insights. Now, I invite our special guest, Mr. Jason Ramaswamy, First Secretary, Mauritius High Commission in India, to address on India Mauritius trade relation. Over to you, sir. Stop sharing. Stop sharing. Just a moment. Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Dr. Banerjee, Executive Director of WASME, His Excellency Professor John Key. President of Wasme and also our, our ambassador in, in Russia, Ambassador Mauritius, uh, Mrs. Sharma, I had a pleasure to meet you today, uh, Director of Wasme, uh, Director of Planning and Development for Wasme, Mr. Puri, founder of eGrowth, Mr. Amuru, who is the lead professional at EDB, and um, I, I suppose he's actually, he already joined us online, and Mr. Chamru, senior <coughs> consultant at CITC Mauritius and Dr. Laik, which I just met now, um, Executive Secretary of WASME. <clears throat> and ladies and gentlemen, I would like to, first of all, thank you for inviting the High Commission to participate in this low board initiative by WASME, and whose objective is to provide information to potential SMEs in India who have an interest towards the African market. That's my understanding, right? Mauritius is ideally placed to play such a role and to link India to the African market. Mauritius and India share a long, very, very long standing historical, bilateral, and economic relations, even cultural relations, which dates back to the 18th century. Over the years, the contribution of India has been significant at the different stages of the economic development of the country. And India's presence in our economy is likely to be further strengthened with the implementation of the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, the SECPA, which was signed between Mauritius and India in April 2021. I'm not going to go into the details of SECPA because Mr. Amaru will, I'm sure Mr. Amaru will elaborate further on that. But um, I just want to highlight uh, some of the specific uh, aspects of SECPA, which is, first of all, this is the first trade agreement that India signed with Africa. So Mauritius is lucky to be the first country for that. And it, it marks an important milestone in our trade and economic relations with India and opens up new opportunities for the business community in both countries and both countries towards Africa as well. So now, since the coming into effect of SECPA, the total merchandise trade between India and Mauritius rose from USD 786 million to from, from 690 million to 786 million within that short lapse of time, which is less than a year. And the three main components of the SECPA are the trading goods, trading services, and the comprehensive uh, economic cooperation chapter, which is an important pillar of, of, of SECPA. And I would like to mention here that the first session of the High Powered Committee on SEC Powers held in India in August this year, where both sides signed and included the General Economic Cooperation Chapter of SECPA. This inclusion is set to facilitate and promote all forms of economic benefits for the, to, uh, between our two countries for expanding economic cooperation in new sectors as well. <laughs> Amongst the sectors of the General Economic Cooperation, we have financial services, textile, small and medium enterprises, handicrafts, jewelry, information and communication technology, film production, space technology, blue economy, 
support infrastructure, healthcare, pharmaceuticals and biotechnology, and the setting up of a special economic zone, Indian special economic zone in Mauritius. And finally, we also have renewable energy in, in forming part of that um, uh, general economic chapter. Now, <laughs> this is SECPA and in line with Mauritius, which has got an Africa strategy going on for some years now, Mauritius aspires to play a leading role in linking India towards the African market. The SECPA is therefore the platform to enhance partnership between India and the African countries. So this joint economic <coughs> initiative will enable India to use Mauritius for expansion of the business into continental Africa. Africa represents a very big market, about 1.3 billion consumers, which is projected to reach 1.7 billion in 2030. The SECPA provides a competitive edge to Indian companies to, to, to enter this vast African market. This is possible because Mauritius has the duty-free access on a market of 450 million consumers by virtue of our membership to the SADEC and COMESA. SADEC is the South African Development Community and COMESA is a common market for Eastern and Southern Africa. We're already a member of, this, of, of these two organizations. And in addition, the coming into force of the continental, African Continental Free Trade Agreement in January opens more opportunities for, for trade through Mauritius towards these, these markets. Now, I gave you an overview of the business and investment opportunities that Mauritius provides through SECPA. Now, let, let me give you some reasons why you should go through Mauritius to invest into Africa. Mauritius is considered as one of the best places to invest in Africa. Democratic principles, rule, rule of law, political stability, and transparency where investments are secured by legislative provisions. We are continuously implementing reforms and streamlining procedures to make Mauritius an even more friendly um, business environment. We have one of the fastest transshipment facilities in the region. Con consignments can be transshipped immediately onto another vessel provided all formalities are completed beforehand. Moreover, Mauritius offers an attractive taxation policy with a harmonized corporate tax of 15%. Companies are exempt from capital gains and tax and dividends. Import of machinery, equipment, and raw materials are exempt of customs duties. And also um, companies investing in pharmaceutical products, medical devices, high-tech products, and food processing benefits from a special eight-year tax holiday. I think this was in the last budget. I wish to highlight that the government has recently embarked on an ambitious project to develop uh, a pharmaceutical and life science park. In addition, the government is setting up a pharmaceutical and biotechnology industry in its endeavor to diversify further towards high value activities. These projects are designed to encourage investment in manufacturing of medicine for the African region and also to stimulate research and development. Mauritius aspires to become a regional hub in the medical field and is therefore providing a, a series of incentives to potential investors in that sector. So, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, um, my, my friends and colleagues online, every investor looks for a safe and secure jurisdiction while making an investment decision. I would like to point out that Mauritius has forged a reputation as a safe, trusted and competitive financial center supported by strong institutional arrangements and good governance. This is evident with the growing relevance of the Mauritius International Financial Center for driving investment to Africa. Furthermore, Mauritius is known as a clean jurisdiction of substance, which abides by all internationally recognized standards, whether in terms of AML CFT, which is anti money laundering standards or cooperative tax jurisdictions. I would therefore invite you ladies and gentlemen, to explore the business opportunities that Mauritius has to offer in a safe and secure environment. The Mauritius-India connection is unique as we are connected by our ancestral, cultural, and historical affinities. Before ending, I would like to inform you that the Mauritius High Commission in Delhi is always ready to help. And if you need any additional information, I would also wish to inform you that we also have an economic counselor. We, we talked about him uh, recently, Mr. Nanlal, who is present in Mumbai. So any information that you need, we will be ready to help for additional information. And please let us know if you need our contact.
for the discussions on the matter. Thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time to share these very useful information with us, sir. Thank you so much. Now I invite Mr. Upendranath Umaru, Lead Professional, Industry Sector Department, EDB Mauritius for presentation on Mauritius India, Comprehensive Economic Cooperation and Partnership Agreement, Business Opportunities. Over to you, sir. Hello, uh, good evening. Uh everyone uh, my greetings to dr samba banerji the chief executive director wasme uh, professor janki our ambassador in moscow the president of wasme for his recommendation and invitation to participate in this uh, webinar uh, mr jason ramsami our first secretary at the highcom in new delhi Mr. Dev Chamru, who I had the pleasure to work with before as CEO of Enterprise Mauritius. So I thank you everyone on behalf to, to invite the Economic Development Board uh, we, on this WASME event, uh, this evening. And it would be glad for me to give you an expose of uh, SECPA and what other business opportunities that come up in Mauritius from thereof. So uh, like mentioned by Mr. Jason, Mauritius in India we had a strong uh, economic cultural relationship that dates back from 1948. We had different MOUs in different areas from maritime infrastructure, ICT, healthcare, and education. We have around 60 Indian companies, large corporates, which are already present in Mauritius, which give an opportunities for SMEs also to follow these large companies. So SECPA definitely brings these uh, opportunities uh, between the two countries. On a yearly basis, we have around 75,000 Indians that travel to Mauritius for tourism purpose. And it, so far we had issued on our occupation permits, we have issued 20 persons to Indian nationals to work and live in Mauritius. So these are the large corporates which are already here, the Indian Oil, the State Bank of India, the Bank of Baroda, Amiti, be it the hotel industry, Louis Oberoi, Larson and Tubro in infrastructure development, Dr. Ragalwal Eye Hospitals in healthcare systems. So we also have a little presence in India from Mauritius. We have the State Bank of India, which is present, the State Bank of Mauritius, which is present there. We have Rogers in terms of Elogic. And we have the Shell Group, which is, in, which is vertically integrated in textiles and apparel products. Usually, India has contributed in large projects like uh, construction of hospitals, our courthouse, and provisions of healthcare products. We had the, the latest one has been uh, contributing in the de development of Mauritius, our metro projects. ICT sector has been fully been supported by the Indian government. SECPA uh, has taken almost nine years of discussions. It started in 2003 and culminated to its implementations in 2011, which brings a new era of cooperation between our two countries. EDB is playing a very central role in terms of trade, in, trade and investment promotions, country branding to enable the, to enable the implementation of SECPA. We have recently been carrying out a market survey on which product Mauritius can position in Indian market. The market survey is ongoing, uh, ongoing presently, and it is being done by Crescendo India. SECPA has eight chapters, like my colleague mentioned to you before. The trade in goods chapter is here. We are discussing on trade in services and the general economic cooperation agreement, which has been put forward by my colleague. The trade in goods chapter brings all the components of rules of origins, sanitary and phytosanitary measures, and also addresses the issues of technical barriers to trade. When we talk about import and export between India and Mauritius, India remains the second most trading partner of Mauritius. 
We are already importing large varieties of products from India, be it oil, medicaments, cotton, boneless meat, shrimps, potato, onion, and fabrics, which are the main import product. And we are importing for almost $807 billion, million dollar, dollar per year. And this has gradually increased, the increasing trend. Despite COVID, we have reestablished our trade, our import from India in 2021. In 2021, we have also made a remarkable export from Mauritius to India. We have been providing inputs to some of the major industries of the Indian sector. We are exporting needle catheters, which are further, which act as an input to production of catheters in India. Aluminium and iron waste scrap. We had fish meals for the aquaculture industry of India. We are providing. We are providing cut shirt cuttons, semi-finish to the, to the aquarial group to India, which is vertically integrated, which shows the example and the role that should follow. Some of the few exports that we started is fresh lychee, vanilla and sunglasses. In the near future, we are going to start the export of uh, uh, shredded tires, which one of Sri Lankan entrepreneurs will start doing in the months to come. So these are the trade relationships between our two countries. And definitely, SMEs can play a central role to tap into these existing avenues of trade. What SECPA offers? In trade in goods, India of offers to Mauritius access, preferential access to 615 products. We had immediate liberalizations to zero tariff for 38 product line be it vinegar, medical devices, pasta. So these are the products that are having immediate zero duty access to India. A gradual eliminations of tariff on 465 products, be it flowers, be it medicated shops, liquors, alcohol, or these all the products are having in a gradual elimination of tariff. We have a quota based tariff for pineapple, lychee, rum, beer, a special sugar. But we, are, we have rooms also for further negotiations under the agreement for, for white tuna. Mauritius is one of the third global exporter of tuna products to, the, to Europe. So these are the opportunities here from Mauritius to exports to, uh, to India. But also, I would come on the details, what has been the provision so far. A special sugar, we are given a derogation of 40,000 tons to export at 10% duty to Indian markets. Beer, we are given a 2 million quota at a 25 duty custom duty instead of 100% duties, which in India applies to, to non-agreed uh, partners. Fruit wine, rum, Mauritius is mo most popular for its rum product, be it agricultural rum, be it industrial rum. You already have your own, own rum, like the old monk or already here, but this gives you the opportunity to taste the different differentiated liquors from Mauritius. At a 1.5 million uh, liters per year, access to the Indian market at 50% duty instead of 150%. So these are the far products the market surveys that uh, EDB is presently carrying out in India have given us a, a big potential for rum and beer and especially sugar and tuna. So these are the opportunities for, uh, for, more, for Indian importers to tap into these products. On the other hand, in Indians, Mauritians can also benefit from other products which are big, big potential, like garments, like sunglasses, medical devices, uh, jerseys and pullovers. Textile and apparel is definitely a challenge, but we are building to have a very good brand positioning in some mega cities of India like Bangalore or Bombay and New Delhi. What in terms of quota for this year, we have a quota for 1,000 tons of pineapple. Lychee, 270 tons of lychee. The, the month is going to come, uh, started since this December. 
Ram product I mentioned to you, special sugar, these are the far products that we have been identified in our market survey. What Mauritius offers to India where SMEs can definitely benefit? We offer a liberalized line products to 310 products to the Mauritian markets, be it spices, tea, beer, alcoholic drinks, spices, tobacco, tablecloth. So we have a variety of products which Indians can export to Mauritius. Some of them are black tea, like chili. You have, we have a quota, we are giving you a quota of 60 tons, which SMEs can definitely benefit. We have, we have selected stationaries, which can be duty-free access to the Mauritian markets. Wooden furniture, exercise book, tablecloth, food and cat uh, pets, food. These are the opportunities for Indian SMEs to tap into the Mauritian markets. Noting further, I could emphasize that the trading service aspect of SECPA brings more opportunities as many SMEs are from the services sector. The services sector covers movement of natural people, the financial services, the telecommunications, and Mauritius has taken commitment to liberalize the market for 120 services, subsectors in the services sector. India will provide access for Mauritius in, in 94 subsectors, which is big opportunities for SMEs to tap. Which are the sectors which are most uh, promising? You have the professional services, accountancy, legal, veterinary, engineering services, legal services, computer related services, real estate, hospital services, tourism, construction, engineering. All, are, all these kind of services will have better market access uh, from Mauritius to India, but also Indian services to Mauritius. Professional services, as I mentioned to you, health services, construction, education. We are already collaborating a lot with a lot of Indian campuses campus in Mauritius, but this is opportunity, op op opening more opportunities in the other sectors in the education fields to Mauritius in the primary and secondary education sector, tertiary education sector, transport sector. My colleague mentioned about uh, opportunities using Mauritius for Africa. My maritime and freight services sector give a lot of opportunities to use Mauritius as a platform towards Africa. I will talk about Mauritius. We all know about Mauritius. We have a population of 1.3 million. We are estimating a real GDP growth of 7.2%. We have an exclusive economic, grow, economic zone of 2.3 million square kilometers, which give a huge opportunities for collaboration in the blue economy sector and also in the aquaculture sector. Mauritius is a very safe and predictable destination to take benefit of. We have a business friendly environment, future ready infrastructure, global connectivity, world travel connections, a great place to live, Indian culture, Mauritius is called the Little India. We have been the 13th globally on ease of doing business. We ranked first in Africa among some major uh, international benchmarking standards like the Global Competitiveness Index, the Travel and Tourism Competitiveness Index, the Democracy Index. So on all these Mauritius has been ranked first among African countries. EDB, EDB is laying a lot in emphasis in accelerating and consolidating existing sectors like the sugar sector, textile sector, fishing sector, real estate sector, but also pushing forward for diversification in the pharmaceutical sector, energy sector, transport sector, biotechnology sector, FinTech, artificial intelligence, and using Africa as a regional headquartering, uh, regional headquartering schemes for tapping business into Africa through Mauritius. Mauritius is a premium base for manufacturing. We are exporting $1.5 billion to the world. Europe, Africa, and USA are our, our main markets. Africa, we are exporting to South Africa, Madagascar, Kenya, among SADEX and Pumiza countries. 
Middle East is a new and emerging market that we are positioning with an export of $100 million per year, where Saudi Arabia, UAE are the major markets, textile and apparel, especially sugar and seafood are the three main components of our exports. But there is opportunities to take advantage of a wider spectrum of agreements. The Africa Free Trade Continental Agreement is one of the opportunities being given. We have an FTA with Turkey, with EU, AGOA with America, FTA with China. So these are the opportunities here for different market access from Mauritius. In the manufacturing sector, when we talk about investment, there is a lot of subsectors in the manufacturing that give opportunities for Indian SMEs to come and invest here. Be it in the light engineering, light engineering sector, printing, packaging, plastic products, diamond polishing, wash making, agro food processing, textile and apparel, technical textile is some things we are looking for. We are already allowed to export duty free from India to Mauritius in synthetic fabric, fabrics, repair and, and maintenance, green technologies. We are putting a lot of emphasis in the sustainable development goals through emerging of new technologies like from recycling, from renewable energy, electronics products. We had a strong, vibrant free port sector, which have around more than 200 companies operating in our free ports from where you can easily uh, do bulk breaking, value additions to exports to Africa, mostly Comesa markets and SADEC markets. ICT sector, through the SECPA services uh, agreement, you will definitely find opportunities in different subsector of uh, IT, be it business process outsourcing, IT services like cloud services, consultancy and training, data centers, digital productions, uh, animations, mobiles game development, uh, emerging some new technologies like online education, digital health technologies, and blockchain. These are the emergence. Last year, our government has passed the Virtual Asset Act, which is another opportunity for Indian to tap into. India has also its own Virtual Asset Act, which has been promulgated this year. We are also laying emphasis in this new, grow, new growth poll a virtual asset and fintech. And Mauritius has all the synergies from sandbox licen licensing, where you can use Mauritius for uh, testing your product, market testing and uh, launch part before launching the products in Africa. We have the real estate sector. Our real estate sector has been extremely attractive to the French and the British people so far. We have seven residential investment scheme, property development schemes, senior living property development schemes. Actually, we have, have almost 120 projects in real estates, 4,200 foreign buyers, uh, ranging from, uh, property, from residence permits to 150,000 euro purchase of residence permits, different nationalities. And this sector has attracted so far $3 billion in terms of investment. We are coming with a smart city schemes where definitely Indians SMEs can do a lot of, lot of projects related to smart city development, be it IoT services, IoT app development, mobile app development. So we are building a complete ecosystem for our eco, uh, for smart city development. We have 50, 22 hectares of land available. We have uh, duty-free uh, investment incentive in this particular sector. And uh, this is very attractive. Uh, real estate is one of the highest GDP contributor of the Mauritian's economy. We had a very fastest and robust business environment, no capital gain tax, no exchange rate control, rule of law. Uh, we have a commercial law, we have uh, income tax and corporate tax are at 15 persons. You are allowed to have 100% foreign ownerships in Mauritius. SMEs are encouraged to do what we call joint ventures are also uh, uh, most welcome. Fiscal incentives, when you are producing in Mauritius and exporting, you are getting 3% corporate tax. We had no duties on import of raw materials, no export duties. You have VAT uh, reimbursement on raw materials import, eight year income tax holiday for some specific tech sectors in high-tech production, agro-processing, pharmaceutical, and seafood. 
tax-free dividend. You are exempted from land conversion tax when you are constructing your own factory. Exemption from registration duty on purchase of land. So these are the fiscal incentives being given by the government, Mauritian government. Mauritius is a nice place to live and uh, work and live. We are very flexible in terms of minimum investment. Retire, you can come and retire as from the age of uh, 50. Minimum investment you can make from $50,000. Our residence permit lapsed for 20 years. And recently, we have come up with a new scheme, which is for property development scheme for senior living, home for senior citizens. Mauritius, we have a growing aging population. We are attracting a lot of investors to come and operate modern and flexible uh, home system for, for elderly, for foreigners, for local people. I mentioned about uh, smart city. And recently, we have come up with a premium visa. You can come and live in Mauritius and work for one year from, from distance. And we are attracting foreign nationals, professionals, digital nomads, families, retirees to take advantage of the one year premium visa. So these are the opportunities. So I thank you for your time and your attention. Like my colleague, I have my colleague in Bombay, Mr. Shivaz Nandal, Mr. Jason is in New Delhi. It is most pleasure to reach out to them or to send us an email at EDB. We are here to assist you, well, to, to assist you wherever possible, to enable your project, your joint ventures, and, and make SME success in Mauritius and Africa. Thank you very much for your attentions. Thank you, sir, for sharing valuable information with us. Now I invite Mr. Dev Chamru, Senior Consultant, CITC Mauritius Limited, presentation on business opportunities for India SMEs in Africa. Over to you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. May I ask um, our colleague to disable um, my screen sharing facility, please? Uh, you can uh, set your camera, sir. Uh, you're not properly visible to us. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Camera. It's fine now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me share my screen. Uh, can you enable um, the sharing of, of uh, screen, please? Good afternoon, everybody. All protocol observed. My... Um, uh, greetings from, from I'm actually in Kampala, uh, but I'm Mauritian. So uh, I'll have a short presentation for you people. Yeah, there you are. Yeah, I'll just do that for you. Put that on. So again, um, thank you for giving me this opportunity to present to you business opportunities that uh, Africa offers to SMEs in India. At the outset, I would like to congratulate Wasme for choosing the word Ubuntu, which is a very a uh, significant word in, in African culture. It's actually um, humanity to others. It's interesting that business people are thinking of humanity to others, but anyway, it's a beautiful context, a very powerful term, and I congratulate uh, Wasmi for taking that. Okay. Africa, your cheese guy. We, we look at Africa. Uh, a lot of people who have never been to Africa may have all sorts of ideas about Africa. People live on trees, people live in caves. Let me show you what Africa is. It's a land of opportunities. Okay? Some sights and sounds of Africa. Africa is not a single country. Africa actually starts from Mauritius in the east and goes all the way to Cape Verde in the west, 
looking at 15 hours of flight from Cape Town in South Africa, going all the way to Tunisia, another 15 to 16 hours of flight. So it's a big, it's a big mass of land we're talking of. Okay. Before you do business with any country or any continent, it's very important to know what you're dealing with. But I must hasten to add that doing business with Africa is not a choice, but a must. Like you say, it's the Ruri hand. Okay. In the old times, SMEs in India were very happy dealing with uh, the local market of 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 1 billion, very happy with that. But globalization and technological advances have made that market an open market. And to survive for SMEs in, in, in India, you have to look at other markets. So which other market do you look at? Are you looking at a market of 1.4 billion right now, which represents something like 17% of the world population? It's a very diverse set of countries, 55 countries, and maybe more to come in a few years. But right now you have 54, 55 countries. And how, check how diverse it is. From St. Helena, we've only 7,000 people to Nigeria, 207 million people. Never think of Africa as a homogeneous continent. It comprises of some very rich countries in minerals. It has large areas of agricultural land and a lot of opportunities. Let me show you something. If you think you are happy doing business with India, Africa, is 10 times bigger than Africa. Sorry, Africa is 10 times bigger than India. This map tells you a story. Africa is three times bigger than China, 10 times bigger than the, uh, India, and actually you can fit a lot of other continents within one. So if you think of doing business, this is a market. This is the market where you should be whether you want to do business with or whether you want to do business in an emerging economy, and that's what it is. I like what Mr. Atul said about Africa being one of the fastest growing continent. Yes. You have around 10 uh, African countries which are actually the most fastest growing economies in the world, okay? So when you want to do business with Africa, this mentality of one time making fast money, that doesn't apply. If you want to do business with Africa, you must have a very long-term perspective of Africa because it's a growing market. It's an emerging market and you have to grow and emerge along with that, okay? Last year, um, it, uh, it attracted something like 83 billion uh, dollars of FDI. And it's expected that the population of Africa by 2034 will be 2 billion people. 2 billion people out of 8 billion people, you know which market you're you looking at. Interestingly, find out what McKinsey said. It said that by 2034, India, um, uh, Africa will have the highest working population between the age of 16 and 65 at 1.01 million, which is billion um, people, working capital, working population, compared to India, which will have uh, 1.068 billion. And China by then will have only 927 million. The European Union will have something like 337 million working people. So you're looking at the continent which is growing. You're looking at a continent that has the highest areas of arable land. 60% of the world arable land is in Africa. It is one of the fastest urbanizing continent, which requires 
huge infrastructural facilities. And this is where uh, India can play a role and where the SMEs of India can find space. In, in Africa is huge. You have several hubs from where to operate. You want to operate in the West Coast, you're looking at Nigeria. You want to operate from the South, you have South Africa. From the East Coast, you have Kenya. From the North, you have Morocco. So it's actually, like I said in the beginning, a land or a continent of opportunities, okay? So what's there for you? What's there for the, for the Indian SMEs? You have opportunities to trade, but trade, your total trade last year was what, 60 billion dollars? China was $249 billion. Europe was $280 billion. So you have space. You have space if you have to catch up with these continents, trade. But there is also opportunities. And, and, and India plays a pivotal role in education. Today, Australia is the number one foreign education destination. India used to be number one some years back. Health sector. I mean, India has the potential to become a, a major supplier of health services. And I've seen the building where I'm talking from now, uh, Dr. Agarwal Hospital is, is based here. And luckily, I was the one who brought them here when I was still CEO of Enterprise Mauritius. Yes. Everything to do with ICT, digitalization, logistics and distribution, manufacturing, agriculture, development of infrastructure. You're looking at the whole spectrum of economic development, like my colleague earlier said, looking for space for development, Africa is the continent to look at, okay? India's, India, is not the only country wants to it wants to do business with uh, Africa. You find that Af uh, American president every two years uh, they visit five or six countries. Immediately afterward, it is followed by the Chinese president, and then is followed by the Russian. Luckily, India has a strong economic diplomacy, and and, and the number of number of uh, embassies being open um, uh, in Africa is increasing. But you have to remember that you are not the only one looking or vying for the market. There are others. And this is the place where you should be looking at. Okay. So you have, how do you beat this competition? You do business with Africa, you trade more, both in terms of import and export. Okay. Now, some years back, India introduced the um, duty-free treatment to imports from LDCs in Africa. And this is the opportunity. SMEs can import a lot of products from Africa for either further value addition in India, like your cashew nuts, your spices, or raw materials, okay? But you can also export. Presently, you're exporting petroleum products, you're exporting some pharmaceutical products and very little of, of how to call fast food um, um, products that goes along. I'm presently in Uganda. 60% of the economy of Uganda is controlled by Indian investors. 60%, that's huge. So this is one aspect you do trade and that's what the best thing is all about. But you can do business in Africa with physical presence to optimize the advantages that you have. You know, Africa may not be one market, but with the coming into force of the continental free trade agreement, which comes up now there are 54 countries there, you can produce anywhere in Africa and access those market duty-free quota free, okay? You can access the European Union under two agreements. It's called the Economic Partnership Agreement or what you call the all but arms agreement. But you can also export to the US under AGOA, the African Growth and Opportunity Act. 
and to other countries under GSP. So it is a manufacturing base, but you have to be very careful. The laws in Africa are changing, and this is I'm addressing now to the Secretariat of WASMI. You must create an economic intelligence unit within the WASMI so that you are able to advise your members of the changing legal and regulatory platform. A lot of Africans are now looking inward. They're looking at import substitution. They're coming up with localization, how to call policies. They're coming up with policies for beneficiation, local content policy. And if you really have to beat your competitors, you must take advantage of these policies. <clears throat> India has a large diaspora in, in Africa. Over 3 million uh, Indians diaspora members are now living in, 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 in Africa. And this is the best gateway to enter the market. You want to come to, to Uganda? I mean, you feel at home. Okay? Spices and curries and chapatis are now uh, normal dishes in Uganda, you'll be surprised. Okay? And my colleagues from Mauritius did mention, if you're looking for a right investment vehicle to invest in Africa, to protect your investment, you can use the Mauritius, how do you call, um, uh, jurisdiction to structure your investment coming in. But do not miss the opportunity to partner with Africans. It is very important that such partnership is built, is sustainable over time. And this is how you get in. You have a first foot in the door approach. You come to the market. I think doing business from India into Africa is a gone phenomenon. If you want to do business with or business in Africa, you have to be in Africa. You have to visit an Africa, okay? And, 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 and there are many um, SMEs which have already set up business plans in, in Africa. Again, in all the countries, my colleague mentioned about, um, how do you call it, Mauritius. When I was working for Uganda, uh, we structured three huge investments from India into Togo. Now I'm looking at, I'm organizing the um, investment forum, which is taking place in two weeks time. And we're looking at having uh, some joint ventures with Indian firms and African companies. So this is again the space what allowed the best opportunities <coughs> for Indian SMEs to go in. But you can also join hand with the corporates. You follow the corporates. They get the big contract. You come in as how to call um, subcontractors. So looking at Africa, you really have to be. Uh, have your, have your finger in the pie, you must come and see what it is. So I'll show you uh, what Africa is, is, what Africa looks like now, okay? Projects. This is Africa. Again, infrastructural development, okay? So my, I'm very passionate about Africa. I'm also passionate about the Indian economy. Uh, so if you want to do business, Either you do with or in, but it's the space for you to be present. 